Breaking news tonight, the whistleblower complaints. He's saying that he should be given the death penalty. Well, as far as I'm concerned, he's a traitor. Whistleblowers in any part of the government are important. And he mentioned Eric Snowden. A traitor! Whistleblowers are everywhere, and whether we think they're traitors or heroes, their impact is undeniable. They are the voices of our conscience. Behind every major fraud, if you look hard enough, you will find a whistleblower. Whistleblowers were responsible for exposing more fraud than internal audit departments, internal compliance departments, and law enforcement combined. Bernie Madoff has been arrested. In the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis and the failure to detect one of the most atrocious Ponzi schemes in history, the Dodd-Frank law was passed. Our mission is to protect investors. Whistleblowers were the answer to the fraud, and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission and the Securities and Exchange Commission launched their respective whistleblower programs. We're going to act like our hair is on fire. The main feature, a bounty a financial incentive to call out wrongdoing. This is a very efficient system to uncover fraud because instead of paying people to find the information, you pay people with the information to reveal it. Once you place a price on whistleblowing, it sort of corrupts the act of whistleblowing itself. There's nothing wrong with whistleblowing being a commercial activity. We have commerce in every other aspect of society. I've done forensic investigations for 35 years, and I've investigated people who've made billions ripping people off. Could it be possible to make billions stopping the scamming? And I hope that's true. I hope, I hope it will be possible in the future for people to make as much money stopping investment scams as they can make perpetrating investment scams. Securing the, the largest SEC award validates a business plan that I've had for years, but um, it's also just good at, at this point in my life to, to, to have that behind me. Whistleblowers like Ted are at the forefront of detecting fraud and corruption. There's little discussion around the power their actions can wield. But is whistleblowing a potential business model? Had my father not been murdered, I don't think I would have ever become a lawyer. It taught me at a very early age that if I didn't look out for myself, no one else was going to. I needed to understand finance, I needed to understand law, I needed to understand international affairs. That was stamped into my consciousness at age 17. I think that my background and trauma, in a sense, prepared me for a perhaps disruptive role as a whistleblower in, the, in my industry. This is a picture of my father right before he was killed in Uganda, East Africa. He was there teaching gerontology, but he was also working with the American intelligence. This was a report, an investigation into my father's disappearance. Because his body had not been found, his estate couldn't be probated, his life insurance couldn't be paid, Social Security would not pay survivors' benefits. So we were penniless. I had to hire a team of lawyers to bring a lawsuit against the Uganda government. The key evidence in the case was they found his car. We were able to enter into a settlement with the Uganda government, which enabled me to go to college and law school. In 1997, I went back to Uganda to find my father's body. So that was the conclusion of my first forensic investigation. I am Edward Sedell, and I've blown the whistle hundreds of times to the SEC over the course of my 35-year career. For as long as the American democracy has existed, so has it been an inviting home for swindlers and sharp dealers. The American worship for entrepreneurial freedom has often blurred the lines of aggressive salesmanship and unacceptable deceit. Consequently, whistleblowers have become increasingly important. Whistleblowing in America goes all the way back to before the Constitution was ratified. In 1863, the grandfather of whistleblower programs, the False Claims Act, was passed. It was something that we actually see today, which is unscrupulous defense contractors selling gunpowder cut with sawdust. But blowing the whistle was risky, so to incentivize people to come forward, a bounty was included. 
a percentage of total recovery. Since 1986, over $59 billion has been recovered by the government. That's thanks to whistleblowers. I really don't like the word bounty because that's, in my mind, that's not what it is. You should not have to bear all the costs for what you are doing for society and shining the light on this. Edward, or Ted like he's often called, started his career at the SEC. After three years there in 1986, he went on to the private sector. As an expert in money management law, as a director of compliance, my job was to vigorously investigate, ferret out potential wrongdoing. But the better I did that job, the more likely I was going to bump heads with someone in senior management. And so it was a catch-22. Ted eventually blew the whistle on the company and got ousted. He spent the next 10 years starting and selling a company. Forensic investigations, both as an attorney as well as for himself, has been a key focus of Ted's for the past 20 years. People are being harmed, and there's no one opposing the perpetrators of the harm. Law enforcement doesn't understand investment fraud. The SEC has some conflicts and has less resources than it needs. State regulators typically do very little. People know that Wall Street rips them off. So given that reality, that Wall Street is in the business of scamming, who's going to represent the investor? And whistleblowers can do that. Fraud is very difficult to measure because so much goes undetected. But it is pervasive and it's expensive. According to three economics professors, one out of every eight firms, meaning 13% of companies, commit wrongdoing. That means annual cost of fraud can be anything from $180 to $360 billion. Shortly after I joined the SEC in, uh, in 2003, I was advised by a senior enforcement attorney to read the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and the Financial Times for uh, investigative journalists who are exposing wrongdoing. He said, you want to be the first one to open a case based on the newspaper. From 2004 to 2010, the earliest data publicly available, the SEC collected $6.2 billion from fraudulent activity. We were operating like beat cops policing the financial markets without a 911 uh, number. And we were losing ground. Investors were getting hurt, and um, too many bad guys were getting away. As much of, as $50 billion. One of those bad guys was Bernie Madoff. In 2008, the news broke that a whistleblower by the name of Harry Markopoulos had been trying to get the attention of the regulator for nearly a decade. Mr. Markopoulos, I, I would like to just say for the record that I see you as a modern-day Greek hero. He claimed he was largely ignored. The SEC never picked up the phone, and the SEC's investigation was off course on day one. It was so ineptly run, and I knew that from speaking to them, that I was scared for my life. By all accounts, it was a tragic and epic failure on many levels. The failure of the SEC to act on the many Markopolis tips spurred an investigation. Worst financial crisis in modern times. At the same time, financial markets were collapsing. On January 20th, 2009, President Obama appointed Mary Shapiro as SEC chairwoman. She immediately created a working group to explore a whistleblower program. What became very clear is that awareness of wrongdoing was high and that too few of those people who had knowledge were coming forward. The SEC Working Group constructed a program that consisted of three key pillars. One is the ability to report anonymously, which is the best protection against retaliation and blacklisting. The second pillar is employment protections. And the third is a monetary rewards in the range of 10 to 30 percent. The bounty provision of the False Claims Act set the precedent for the financial incentive. Still, it was controversial. Luigi Zingales is the co-author of Who Blows the Whistle on Corporate Fraud. Most companies are not fraudulent, so in order to find a big fraud, you have to go through, let's say, 100 companies. 
So you have to pay a person analyzing 100 companies and 99 of them, the money is wasted. And if uh, he arrives to the 100th one a little bit tired, he might even miss it. So that would be a complete disaster. If you have a reward system, then the person that is part of the fraud or is aware of the fraud comes to you uh, and for a relatively small amount of money will actually reveal the fraud. Hey, Chris. How are you doing? Doing great. You know, I was thinking about how if it hadn't been for you, I would have never really paid attention to the fact that there was an SEC whistleblower program. My initial response to Dodd-Frank was, was basically to yawn. I didn't view it as the, the whistleblower program as being particularly interesting at all. I thought it was a lot of talk and no action. But a client came to me. And he said, I want you to file a whistleblower case on my behalf. But as I recall, you contacted the SEC before you even retained me as your counsel, didn't you? Yes, officially. Because yeah. I, as the, a trustee of the $10 billion Kentucky retirement system, have been made aware of certain illegalities. So I was shepherded into the SEC whistleblower program. The SEC didn't take action on that tip, but Ted was motivated by the potential. He filed five cases in the following 12 months. Once I had done an investigation and found an abuse, I have two choices. One is at the end of my investigation, I help my one client and walk away. Or I help my one client and I tell the SEC so that thousands of others will not be Abused. We are getting some news coming out of Washington, a settlement, $267 million. With Five years later, SEC fined J.P. Morgan thanks to tips from two whistleblowers. Ted was one of them. He was scheduled to get $78 million for his contribution. It's very rare that the media makes whistleblowing out to be as an exciting thing as it really is. And so this headline whistle blowout I thought was very clever. I have lots of articles about my work from major media but nothing quite as interesting as that. Whistleblowing really does capture the American Im imagination but I like that article because it's one of the few that I think joyously proclaims uh, good things can happen from this work. Ted got the final payment in June 2019, nearly eight years after his initial call. Between the CFTC and the SEC, it ended up being $68 million. When the money finally comes in, you're exhausted. There may be moments when you're hearing you're getting money where you open a bottle of champagne or whatever, but by the time the money actually comes into your account, you're just exhausted. More than 100,000 J.P. Morgan clients were affected by J.P. Morgan's wrongdoing. And the SEC would not have known about that wrongdoing but for a whistleblower. What is the value of that? The value is 28,000 tips and nearly $2 billion in total monetary sanctions since the inception of the program. 500 million of that has been or will be returned to investors. That's thanks to 66 whistleblowers who have received $387 million in awards. But not everyone agrees on the need for the bounty. Adam Waits studies whistleblowing. He says that the main reason people blow the whistle is a sense of justice and the greater good, not out of self-interest. If people often blow the whistle for altruistic or moral reasons, you're changing sort of what a whistleblower looks like in the public perception. Once monetary bounties are introduced, people might feel that whistleblowers are not necessarily moral heroes. The personality of the speaker should not interest us. What in should interest us is what they're saying, the facts, and can they prove those facts? Do they have documents? Do they have witnesses? If so, we really don't care what they had for breakfast, right, or what kind of person they are. They could be a complete criminal slob. I mean, it's not ideal from an optical point of view, but really functionally. Some studies say that the financial incentive increase frivolous claims. Others argue that employees should be required to report internally first. According to the SEC, 83% already do. 
In 2018, the Supreme Court unanimously held that whistleblowers must report alleged misconduct to the SEC to be protected under the Dodd-Frank anti-retaliation provisions. But since the Trump administration came into office, the program has been under serious threat. On October 12, the Associated Press reported that final changes to the program could be happening before the end of 2019. Capping the financial award is on top of the list. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is one of the most effective, both in terms of the results on the corporate side, finding wrongdoing, and on the whistleblower side, protecting anonymity and allowing them to continue their lives. This is a, this is a success story. You're going to now downgrade this? For what reason? Well, you know, there's only one reason, to protect the perpetrators. Other countries are considering emulating the bounty program. Canada has already, but in the UK, they've been skeptical. In 2014, a team of consultants recommended the British Parliament not to adopt a bounty program. What's interesting is they assessed the SEC whistleblower program at a time where uh, only a few awards had been paid out because SEC investigations take two to four years to do and the awards process takes a, a number of years. The best proof of the program is that more than $2 billion has been collected uh, and distributed to injured investors as a result of the SEC whistleblower program. That is greater than the entire monetary sanctions collected by the UK regulatory authorities during the same time period in whole. While whistleblowing under Dodd-Frank is a tempting business model, an award is extremely rare and time-consuming. It can take anywhere from six to eight years from claim to actual payout. And more importantly, out of the 28,000 calls to the SEC, only 66 individuals have received an award. That's less than 0.002%. As far as a business model, it's a hugely risky proposition to take your, li your life and your career in your hands and say, I'm gonna do the right thing and I hope I get a payout because for every one that has any kind of payout, there are 30 or 50 or 100, they had all the right facts, but something about their case didn't interest the government, something about their case, there was a conflict with the people who were weighing it, they get nothing. Ted's clearly an outlier. He's a so-called citizen whistleblower with a rare combination of skills. He filed five cases until the JP Morgan complaint paid off. He's currently in the middle of two cases and hopeful that he could get an award from both. He's planning another one soon. Ted is, is a mystery to me. He is basically a private SEC enforcement attorney and he's probably one of their most valuable streams of information for cases. And so I think he's, he's not doing it just for the money, he's doing it because he's emboldened because he's having a positive impact in rooting out systemic financial frauds. One of the things that, that I'm grateful for is that I've been able to make money doing something that inspires a lot of people. Today, with the laws being what they are, whistleblowers can come forward in anonymity and not ruin their lives. I've said there are a million ways to make a million, but probably few is gratifying as blowing the whistle on corporate corruption. 